Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and this is a basic primer on porosity and permeability. Two important factors in geology and hydrology in fluid flow, fluid and placement. So, important in petroleum geology, hydrogeology, and engineering. So, basically, porosity is the void space between grains and rocks. It's measured as percentage or decimal. Permeability is the measure of, uh, of a porous medium to flow fluids. It's measured in darcies or millidarcies. So, why is this important? So porosity is an important factor in the volumetric equation. I have a video on how volumes are measured in hydrocarbon fields and got gross rock volume, net to gross ratio, porosity, hydrocarbon saturation, formation volume factor. And porosity is a very important factor in that. Basically, the bigger the porosity, the bigger the fluid capacity, i.e. the more hydrocarbons you can contain within an oil field or the more water you can contain within an aquifer. It's expressed either as a decimal or percentage. The pores will be filled with fluid, whether it's brine water, natural gas, oil, other hydro non-hydrocarbon gases. And the proportion of the hydrocarbons is the saturation or SH, and portion of water is SW. Obviously, in aquifers, it's all SW. But more pores, bigger porosity, more fluid capacity. There are different types of porosity. So you've got intragranular porosity, primary porosity, so that's the holes between the grains. Secondary porosity, this is when diagenesis dissolves some of the matrix of cement, quite often found in carbonates. Vuggy porosity, so this is a vug within a carbonate, a rather large hole. Fracture porosity related to fractures. Now, some of the porosity can be filled in with cement, reducing porosity. And you have low porosity, unconnected porosity, and connected porosity. So, effective porosity is the connected pores. Maximum porosity of packed grains is 47.64%, and most reservoir rocks within hydrocarbon fields have between 33 and 10% porosities. Less than 10% porosities doesn't tend to flow very well. I'll come to permeability later. 30, more than 33% hardly ever happens because of the connections of the grains. So porosity definitions. So this is uh, Elsinger and Priva, 1988. So you've got the matrix, which are the, uh, the quartz grains within a sandstone. Uh, carbonate grains within, within a limestone, You've got potential clay within there, You've got structural water as well. So total porosity from a neutron log, and I'll come to how things are measured, uh, measures basically all of this bound, all this water, including water in the holes and uh, water in the bounds. Density log comes again here, measure the density of the rock, also gives you the absolute of uh, total porosity. Then you've got large pores, small pores, and isolated pores, which are negligible in most rocks. Um, and this is where your hydrocarbon volume is. So effectively, that is what you're looking to try to find. Now, porosity decreases as you bury rocks. So as you as you uh, compact rocks, porosity clo close up, and porosity decreases from about you know in the high 30s, 40s at surface to I don't know five, ten percent when you're at depths of four, five, six kilometers, unless there's something else holding up. Now you can get relatively high porosities in the in the twenties, even at six kilometers. I uh, worked in a North Sea oil field called Franklin, and I looked at some of the core from that. That was buried at nearly six kilometers. That had nearly 20% porosity in some of the rocks because this was preserved by overpressure. Porosity tends to be measured using wireline logs. So this is a probe which is lowered on a wireline down the middle of an oil well. Uh, and there's several different tools that measure it. So density log, or rho b, which is, uh, works by bouncing gamma rays and looking at reflected gamma rays. Uh, neutron uh, log, which looks at ON5, which looks at uh, using doing the same with neutrons. Sonic log, which is sound velocities, and there's also nuclear magnetic resonance. So the logs can typically run on wireline, but can be run using drill pipe in particularly tough logging conditions. Also, logs can be put near the drill bit during logging while drilling. Most people tend to use uh, N5 rho B uh, cross plots, such as this example here. Uh, that's the most common methods, but others also tend to be used. And they will give you subtly different re results. But N5 rho B cross plots are the one that most people use. And you will end up with this sort of image here, where you will have porosity N5 rho B, big separation in gas, small separation in oil, close on, on, on um, in water. So this is a hydrocarbon zone, this is a water zone, and this is a sand zone. Basically, please talk to you, friendly petrophysicists. So you've got things like the density equation and the Wiley equation for sonics. But, you know, talk to petrophysicists. They're quite friendly people, honestly. 
We can also measure porosity in cool. Now, cool samples are rock samples, so examples that are here, taken here, uh, which you would cut from the, the rock using a special drilling bit. And you can do various things within that. You can take the core plugs, typically tend to, uh, you know, tends to be some diameter. And you can do various experiments on it to measure your matrix volume, pore volume, etc. Uh, gravimetric methods such as Archimedes principle, basically flooding it with fluids. Um, and trying to figure out what's going on in terms of density. Obviously gives you real value, but it gives you value from a small localized uh, sample. Uh, person you really want to talk to is a former colleague of mine called Adam Moss, uh, AKM Geo Consulting. He's now got his own business. So talk to Adam if you want to know more about Core. He, he really knows his stuff. Permeability is the measure of the ability of fluids to flow through a material. Obviously also very important in hydrology and petroleum engineering. It was eventually invented by this guy, a French man called Henry Darcy. Not this guy, not Mr. Darcy. The two were not known to, not related and are not known to Jane Austen. And you have Darcy's law. So Q is the flow rate, K is the permeability, A is the cross-sectional area of the sample that you're looking at, L is its length, and there are various constants, uh, mu, etc. So basically high permeability equals higher flow rate. It's measured in Darcy's, but more commonly milli Darcy's, not Mr. Darcy's. So how is permeability measured? Well, several ways of doing it. Um, you can measure it in uh, on core plugs. So we talked a little bit about core a few minutes ago with porosity. You can also use these core plugs to measure permeability uh, in laboratory samples. So this is an example of a laboratory rig and uh, other and similar things. You can also use a mini permeameter. So that's a little probe and you can use that on a piece of core. So this is a piece of core with a whole bunch of variable permeability within it. So this is from a quite a crazy oil field, which uh, had difficulty in, uh, in producing things. Um, uh, but the core samples have many biases because people tend to cut them from better quality uh, rock. Another way of measuring permeability is from well tests. So this is when you open up a well and you flow it. And this is a flow rate versus time plot. So you flow rate, you shut it in, and then you look at the buildup curve. Now, pressure buildup, so that's pressure and that's time. So pressure would build up when... Uh, the rock is good, it will build up fast. If the rock is less good in terms of permeability, it will build up slower. Again, please talk to your well test engineer about that. DST permeability is more representative because it's done under realistic conditions. But obviously, DSTs are quite expensive, so not always do them. Porosity permeability relationships. Now, porosity is related to permeability. Permeability is related to porosity. Rocks with higher uh, porosity tend to have higher permeabilities. But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. It's nowhere near as simple as that. And different rock types would have different behaviors. You also have a situation of uh, diagenesis, so clay minerals. So this is an example by my former boss, the late Greg Cowan, one of his papers, where, where there was a situation where we had a field in Irish Sea, this is published, where we had this uh, feature called placy illite. So it's a clay mineral that uh, basically blocked up the pores. Prosty was very high, but the permeability was very poor. You also have permeability enhancement uh, in terms of structuration, fracturing, which might enhance permeability. Again, complicated situation, so it's not a simple one-to-one, -one, high porosity equals high permeability, not as simple as that. Then you have relative permeability because different fluids flow at different rates. So you've got permeability for gas, permeability of oil, permeability of water, different models, Corey and Let. So these are some pictures of uh, saturation and relative permeabilities for different oil gases etc again very important for engineers when you're building a simulator model to figure out what goes where so looking at how rocks are permeable so it's just a little chart which i posted some while ago on linkedin so darcy are very high permeability so these are things like large fractures castification within limestones then milli darcy between one darcy and you know 0 0.1 of a milli darcy um you have sandstones, limestones, etc. So anything with a with a one milli Darcy and above tends to flow naturally at reasonable rates. Okay, there's a bit more complicated than that, but basically higher than that is possible. And if you have a particular layer which has unusually high permeability, that may be a problem because it'll flow water faster than the surrounding oil-based areas. There's a field I worked on which had a problem like that. They had a layer called the megaperm. 
If you're talking about mini Darcy's, uh, you've got situations where you have tight gas, silty shales, cemented chalk, and you know bricks have a permeability of 0.1 of a milli Darcy because you can see you know uh, water sipping through brick. It's again not great. And if you've got nano Darcy's, that's when the ceiling rocks come in. So that's laminated trails, cemented trails, etc. And some nano Darcy are things like halide, which gives you good ceiling rocks. And I have a video on seals on my YouTube channel. So just to sum up, porosity and permeability are important factors in petroleum geology, hydrology, and engineering. Porosity is the void space between rocks. Measure the percentage of decimal permeability is the ability of a rock to flow fluids through it. Measure the Darcy's, mostly milli Darcy's because they're fairly low. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what porosity and permeability are, how important they are relatively. So please consult your petrophysicist. Please talk to a petroleum engineer and happy geological modeling. Thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.